Hey, Martin, did you see that live stream from the Nature Reserve? Hey, Katie. Yeah, I'm watching it now. It looks like a Django pony had wandered into unicorn territory. Jeez, I hope they get along okay. <laughs> Here's hoping. Alex is an engineer at Vivid, a digital agency that creates websites for their clients using Django. Django is a web framework written in Python that handles serving web pages for you. You define data models as Python objects, and Django simplifies communicating these to a database. Vivid's client websites, like Agate Construction, currently runs on servers in Vivid's office, but the company is moving to the cloud. Alex looked at running their existing client websites on virtual machines, but that would require a fair amount of ops work. Alex wonders, can they go serverless? Yeah, they can. Cloud Run is a managed serverless platform where each service runs stateless. No data is stored on the service itself. But Cloud Run can connect to stateful backing services, databases, APIs, and the like. Web frameworks that rely on databases like Django can run in a serverless setup with some configuration. The general steps described in this video can be used for not only Django, but any other content management system that uses Django, such as Wagtail and Django CMS. We've created code labs that walk you through everything described in this video. They're linked in the description below. Any Django site can be built into a container image. This image can be deployed as a Cloud Run service, but that just handles the code part. Django also needs a database to store relational data and a place to store media and static assets. These two backing services need to be provisioned and accessible by the service. First, let's talk data. Django supports many relational databases, including Postgres and MySQL. Alex can use Cloud SQL, a managed database service that supports both Postgres and MySQL, and even MSSQL. When Alex first deploys their Cloud Run service, they'll need to set the add SQL instance parameter, linking their Cloud Run service with their Cloud SQL database. This allows the service and the database to communicate over an automatically encrypted connection. Django will also need connection settings, not just the instance hostname, but also the database username and password. Alex can store these credentials using Secret Manager, retrieving them at runtime. From here, everything is set up to run Django's migrate command. Secondly, media and static assets. Alex can configure their new Django app to use a Google Cloud storage bucket to store these files. Cloud storage can be configured as a custom storage backend in Django using the Django storages package. Alex just needs to install the package and edit their settings.py to use this new storage backend and point to their new cloud storage bucket. From here, everything is set up to run Django's collect static command. This all seems great. Uh, but about those Django commands, where do you actually run those? Well, this is the question, Martin. Cloud Run focuses on serving containers and doesn't provide a way to run a one-off shell command against a running service. What Alex can do is run these commands as part of their continuous integration process using Google Cloud Build. In their Cloud Build config, they can add a new step called migrate between their build step and their deploy step. This migrate step uses the app engine exec wrapper, which allows commands to be run against a database during a cloud build job. Additionally, they can configure this job to be automatically run anytime the agate code is updated in source control using cloud build triggers. If an automated process doesn't work for Alex's migration strategy, they can run their migration commands manually with help from cloud SQL proxy. We've described this method in more detail in our blog post. By connecting these managed services together, Alex is able to host their websites in the cloud. These services automatically scale up and down as their load changes throughout the day without having to pay a fixed price for a virtual server. Details for everything mentioned in this video, including the code labs, are linked in the description. So how are the herd doing? Uh, it looks like they're getting along great. <laughs> Yay!